Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Today, I'm going to do something very different than I normally do it. Today, I'm gonna to make my first attempt at making bread. And not just any bread, but Cuban bread. I live in New York and I'm near no Cuban bakeries, no Cuban restaurants, so I have to try to make this. I have to learn how to make this. And when I go through this process, you'll be going through it with me, step by step. And once you have Cuban bread, you'll never forget it. So I'm gonna show you how to make it my way. So follow me for the ingredients and for the steps. have here are um, quite a bit now I have bread flour now they say you can use regular flour but the best flour that I've been told was bread flour so some people do 50 50 they'll use um, um, half bread flour and half um, self rising or all-purpose I'm just going to use bread flour because that's what I've been told and I don't want to mix this up and mess up this whole process anyway I have three cups of bread flour and I may not use all of the flour um, that's what I have here I have uh, some manteca which is um, fat lard so I have three tablespoons of uh, manteca I have um, two teaspoons of salt two teaspoons of sugar I have one pack of instant yeast that's fast acting yeast um, I have three quarter cup of water warm water and I have my starter here now this was supposed to be prepared the day before, so I did this yesterday. So it's, um, how you can tell that the um, yeast is, is ready is because you see all those bubbles at the top? That means that the yeast is active and alive. And you see all the bubbles down here? That means it's doing its thing. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Now if you're using fast active yeast, you don't have to make a starter. That's only if you're using dry active yeast. I'm going to show you how to make a starter if you were going to make one. You're going to use a half a cup of warm water. It has to be warm, not hot, because hot water kills yeast. You're going to use a half teaspoon of yeast, dry yeast. You're going to use a half a cup of flour, and you're going to let this rest for 24 hours. Now that I see that the uh, yeast is active, um, because I noticed the little white spots at the top of the water, I'm going to add my flour. So this is my, how I make my starter. You want to cover this with saran wrap and leave it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. And since I already made my starter, I'm going to use it anyway. But like I said, you don't need a starter if you have active, um, fast acting yeast or rapid, rapid acting yeast. But um, I'm going to add this to um, my dough, you know, because I made it already. I don't want to throw it away. Just stirring the starter up. I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to start making the bread. Let's go. I'm gonna add um, three quarter cup of water, warm water. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of yeast. And I'm gonna just add some sugar to this. I'm adding uh, two teaspoons of sugar. I'm gonna mix that up. I'm gonna let this rest for 10 minutes and I'll check back later to see if the yeast is active. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes and I'm gonna check my uh, yeast to see if it's active. Yes, it's active because you can see on top the bubbles. Look. Look at this. You see this? This is definitely active yeast. Okay, so let me move this a little bit so you can see. See that? That's how you can tell all of this foam up. I mean, this yeast is alive and kicking. Okay, so we're on to a good start. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so I'm gonna add three tablespoons of lard that I melted. 
I'm gonna add some salt. So that's, this is two teaspoons of salt. And I'm adding, out of three cups of uh, flour, I'm gonna start off by just adding one cup. And I'm gonna mix that up. Okay, so now that it's, um, I have that mixed up, what I'm gonna do is add some of the um, starter, not all of it. I'm only using half my starter because I wanna make uh, more bread later. So I'm gonna um, save half of it. So and if, if you're gonna make bread, don't use all your starter. Just use half of it and save the other half in the refrigerator. Now it would be easier if you had a bread mixer, but I don't have a bread mixer to mix this bread, so I'm using my hands. The best tools in the kitchen, right? <laughs> I'm gonna start kneading my dough, and this takes about 10 minutes to do. Okay guys, so this is what I have. This is the way your dough is supposed to be. So it took me 10 minutes to knead this, and if you want muscle guys, knead some bread. <laughs> I'm telling you, this takes a lot. Out of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some oil to this um, dough and then I'm going to set this aside, cover it for um, two hours and to, because what I'm doing is letting it rest so it can double in size. Now I'm going to add some oil over top of it to prevent the dough from drying out and I'm going to let this sit covered and um, with a saran wrap for two hours and I'll be back. Um, it should double in size, it should be a lot bigger than what it is now. Well guys, two hours later, my dough has doubled in size, as you can see. And the first thing they say to do is to press the ear out of it. So I'm just gonna punch a hole in it and deflate it. So now I'm gonna remove the dough from the bowl and I'm going to try to make two loaves out of this dough. You can tell when your dough is ready. When you press the uh, dough and um, it springs back to you. It doesn't stay indented. So like this, you see how it came back? This one, that one came back a little longer. This one did it really fast. This one stayed indented. That mean I have to knead this one a little longer. This one is ready. You see that? This one is leaving. It's coming back, but it's still taking too long. This one is coming back faster. So this one has to knead a little bit more. Okay, so I have um, my dough ready. And I'm just going to um, put this one to the side because I'm going to do this one first. So I'm just going to need this a little bit more, um, about maybe one more minute. And then I'm going to go on to the next step. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to start trying to shape the uh, dough so that I can put it in and make it into a rectangle shape so that I can start making my bread. Now I'm gonna get ready to roll it. So that's the reason why I'm trying to shape it more rectangular. What I'm gonna do is start forming the, the bread. So I'm gonna roll some here this way. I'm gonna roll some this way. And then I'm gonna just roll it together. Hold it like this, and then I'm gonna roll it. I'm gonna pinch the ends closed and kind of roll them under so that when they start to bake that they won't open up. So I just sprayed a pan, my um, baking dish 
with some olive oil. You can use butter if you want. And um, now I'm gonna prepare to go on to the next step. Okay, so I'm gonna make the impression that you see in, um, in Cuban bread. And our, normally they use a palm leaf and they put it down the middle so that they can make that line that you see, that distinctive line that we all know. But because I don't have a palm leaf and I'm not, I have no access to palm leaves because I live in New York, this is what I'm using to make the impression. So I'm going to press this, try to put it as much in the center as I can. And then what I'm going to do is, this is going to rise, this dough is going to rise, it's going to spread out. So when I come back an hour later, you're going to notice the difference in the size. Before I let this rest, I'm going to um, take a warm uh, cloth and I'm going to put it right over top of it. That way that it prevents the bread from drying out while it's resting. So it's been an hour and I'm just going to check on my dough and see what it looks like. Yeah, it definitely has doubled in size. Look at this guy. They're touching each other. Look at that. So um, what I'm going to do now, true soft, is... I'm gonna prepare this for the oven. If you have a spray bottle, then you can spray the top of the bread with water. This forms the crust of the bread. I don't have a spray bottle, so I'm using a brush. So now I'm gonna bake this at 425 degrees for 20 minutes. And I'm adding a um, baking dish with water in it. That creates moisture in the oven. And that also helps form the crust on your bread. So far, it is looking delicious okay okay so now they're ready now look at the pretty golden color that it has so i'm just going to test it out to see oh my goodness i can't wait to eat this mm, it's nice and funky it's soft in the middle excuse me <laughs> it really is good mm, just cut a few more pieces Flaky, that's the thing that I'm excited about. And it's nice and soft here. Crunchy on the top. You see that? And look, nice and soft. Look at that. I was gonna wait till this cool down, but I can't. Oh, this is nice. I'm gonna put some butter on this. See, it's still hot. You can still see the, uh, look at this. Look at that. It tastes really good. Well guys, it has been a long process making Cuban bread. But I thank you guys for the love, the support, the encouragement, um, because this makes me want to do what I do. And um, I wanted to do this video to show you how to make Cuban bread because if any of you don't live near a Cuban bakery, you can make your own Cuban bread. Um, and it's a science really behind this whole thing because if you get one thing wrong, you're going to mess up the bread. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the love and support. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.